So if you hear this red flag from a man, there's a good chance he'll break your heart. And we're going to actually give you several different phrases that men say that could actually be a precursor for them actually creating their exit clause. I think some men who are either rather manipulative or they're rather unconscious set up their exit clause. In other words, their, their escape plan by actually dropping seeds right from the beginning. And that way they can always come back and say, see, I told you so kind of thing. Okay, now what I'm about to share is ridiculously obvious. And yet it's sadly, I witness women habitually neglect this one particular red flag. And then there's a series of red flags that kind of go with this. And so we're gonna dive into this and we're gonna give you a little variance with this within this as well. So the most significant red flag is when a man says, I'm not looking for anything serious. Now, the challenge with that is you might not also be looking for anything serious as well. So if two people aren't looking for something serious and they engage in some activity together, meaning getting to know one another, which includes both emotional connection as well as physical connection, what oftentimes happens is one person, typically the woman, gets attached to the other person and it can actually set you up for heartbreak later on down the road. So if you are someone looking for a serious relationship and they say, I'm not looking for anything serious, well, I guess it begs the question, what does that mean, I'm not looking for anything serious? So I invite you to even ask, what does that mean? So if it's not serious, then it's casual, then the question then becomes, what kind of relationship are you looking for? What kind of relationship are you looking for? If you're seeking a casual relationship, well, let's put that in a bucket for a moment. Are you seeking friends with benefits? Let's put that in a bucket for a moment. Are you seeking a situationship? That's put some, let's put that in a, a bucket for a moment. Are you seeking ethical, what's it called? Ethical non-monogamy. That's another new phrase that's out there. It's very popular for the polyamorous goose, ethical non-monogamy. See, serious to me represents a desire to go from a dating to not. Okay, so let's 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 look at this for a second. What's the purpose of dating? Like, well, Jonathan, it's about having a good time and you get to know each other and have a good time. No, the purpose of dating is a vetting process to decide if you want to enter into a relationship with this person. And then what's a relate what's the purpose of a relationship? Like what's the purpose of it? Like why do people do this? Well, I believe if you don't have the intention of getting to a serious place and then this begs the question what is serious? Then you're actually going into the dating dynamic, the relationship dynamic with no direction. Let's just say for example you lived in Los Angeles. And you taking you driving to um, you're driving to New York City, okay? You have no map, you have no GPS, you have no compass, you have no uh, uh, Thomas Brother guy. Does anyone remember Thomas Brothers guides? <laughs> and you have no map quest, you have no Google Maps, you have no ways, you have no navigation system. How are you going to get there? Are you just going to go? Hmm, I'll just. I'll just drive towards the rising sun. Yeah, but you can end up in a lot of different places. And that's what's happening today is most of you don't have a sense of direction on what you want. So it's very easy to fall into the trap of those that are seeking non-serious because they're giving you attention in that moment. They're giving you some validation, some admiration, some compliments, that sort of thing. So then you have to decide what is serious. Is serious um, getting married at some point? Is serious living together? Is it sharing expenses in life? What is serious? And for each one of you, that might have a different answer to you, for you, excuse me. When a man says, I'm not looking for anything serious, I would want to know what's the resistance? What's the fear to serious? So now we're gonna take this question 
or this statement, and we're going to take it a bit deeper. What is the resistance or fear? And this is where you can actually find out more and actually uncover if it's really a situation for, if it's just, okay, some people will say, I'm not looking for anything serious because they have no idea if they want something serious with you. They want something serious, but they don't know if you're that person. Some men will say, let's take it slow. Now, let me be clear. When you hear a man say, let's take it slow, but he was like a jackrabbit to get you in bed. So he, he got you in bed, you slept together, and then immediately after that, let's take it slow. What that means is, I don't know if I like you enough for anything serious, but I'm certainly happy to put my penis in your vagina on a regular basis so I can ejaculate in you. Bum, bum, bum. Jonathan, you said a dirty word. <laughs> Just graphically describing biology here for a moment. So when a guy says, take it slow, after he was rushing to get you in bed, what that is really saying is, I don't know if I like you enough to emotionally invest in you. I want to drag this out as far as possible. And by the way, when men take it slow, they can be searching with other women. They can be putting themselves out there in a variety of different ways. So just recognize that that's a big, gigantic red flag as well. Now, here's the thing about some men who say, I'm not looking for anything serious. It's really... A, it's an escape clause to say, look, I don't know if I like you enough, well enough to actually even tell you I want something serious. But what does happen to some men? Okay, some men that don't hate their ex spouse, that aren't pining for an ex relationship, they've had good relationships after their divorce, for example. For those of us in midlife, there's a good chance you're divorced. Um, they don't have professional issues going on. The ground underneath them is solid. They can pay their bills. They have a good relationship with their children if they have children. See, these men are actually might say that initially because th that's why it begs the question, what does that mean to you? And then you come back to what's the resistance. If the resistance or fear is they got burned badly, then chances are they haven't healed from their past relationship. And that makes them very problematic to be in any future relationship. But I'm thinking, I, I went to a wedding um, just 10 months ago. And he said in the beginning, you know, I'm not looking for anything serious. And, and, and she, you know, progressed, you know, she asked some deeper questions. And as she investigate what that was, is he was just simply saying, you know, I don't know if I like you well enough to know, but I, I'm looking for a serious relationship. So what was interesting, he started off with a precursor, but when she dug a little bit, she uncovered where he was really at. Okay. Fast forward, they dated for two years. They got engaged and got married um, roughly about eight months after that. He was ready. The timing was right for him because the ground underneath him was solid. See, ladies, many of you find yourself in dynamics with men that I call spenders. If you're not familiar with my chart, I call them the three types of people actively dating. By the way, you can look here. This is not a fact. It's merely an opinion. I call them users, which are about 20% of the population. Those are the, those are the people seeking short-term game, the love bombers, the players, the gold diggers, the selfish people, the entitled people. Um, they're only out for themselves in a good time. And then I have what I call grower and builders. It's about 20% of the population. They seek long-term commitment. They're emotionally grown up. They have, um, they have their act together. They have good relationship skills, okay? But vast majority, 60% are what I call spenders. These are people that want companionship, connection, and sex. Okay, companionship. They have no direction in their life. They're uncertain. They're fearful. They have dysfunction going on in their life. So your job, okay, so you have an 80% chance to end up with a user or spender. Now, as you notice back in this, the arrows pointing, this, there is arrows pointing towards the growers, right? Okay. Someone might be at, right at the cusp of from going from a spender to a grower. And the key point, to look for those men, because you're most likely going to find someone in the 80% category, is 
Is their life in shambles? Do they have any negativity towards a past relationship? Are they complainers? Do their actions not match their words? You have to be your own detective. You have to be your own detective. I'm sorry, but Jonathan, everybody tells me it should just be easy. By the way, why isn't it so easy? You shouldn't have to work at this stuff. Folks, the most important decision you are ever going to make in your life is the person you let into your life. That is by far, that is by far more important than becoming a doctor. That's even more important than having children. I'm sorry, this is just my spec, my opinion here. This is more important than your the job you chose. The most important decision you're ever going to make in your life is your life partner. And we have this fucked up fantasy that if we have chemistry, it's just going to equal relationship success because we have so much chemistry. I read on dating profiles, if there isn't chemistry, don't even bother kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, chemistry is important. There's no doubt about that. Chemistry is important. But what's more important or excuse me, I'm pulling up my relationship iceberg chart. Yeah, chemistry is on the top. It's the first thing we see. But compatibility is about shared values, a shared vision, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. That's far more critically important. Now, I want to dive into one more red flag that can be a heartbreak for you. And that is those spenders who are stuck in the past or they have walls up. They are stuck in the past or have walls up. People are stuck in the past. They're still hung up on a past relationship. They talk about a past relationship incessantly. They talk about how they were, um, their previous partner was a narcissist. They were an abuser. They were an alcoholic. They were a user. All this negativity about a past relationship, okay? Or they have walls up and they are unwilling to dive deeper emotionally into the relationship. They're unwilling to dive deeper. They're fine with the surface, but they're unwilling to answer deeper questions. See, here's the bottom line, folks. The whole dating process, I said this in the beginning of the broadcast, is a vetting process. Your job is to assess whether or not they have the capacity to meet your needs. And I'm assuming if you're watching my channel, you have the desire to be partnered with someone, whether you live together, you get married on a spiritual level or a legal level, you actually want partnership. Well, here's the bottom line, folks. Remember I come back to this relationship iceberg, this emotional maturity right there, emotional maturity. These are humans that have the capacity that have good relationship skills they have healed from their childhood wounds and adult traumas and they have the capacity to to be an active participant in a partnership see the problem is today is we are no longer dating for partnership we're just dating for a good time we're dating for entertainment it's all about attraction and romance and not enough emphasis is spent on the pre-qualifying if they are actually a good fit for me. I'll share something personal with you in, in, a, in a few moments as well. And it saddens me because so many of you women, I'll be candid with you. Look at, I've got duct tape. Look at this. I'm pulling out some duct tape. Okay. Duct tape. Tape. This is this is you women. You have duct tape over your mouth. You are unwilling to ask for your needs to be met. Let me repeat that. You are unwilling to ask for your needs to be met. I mean, you you're fearful. You're afraid. You're afraid that if you speak up, he will leave you. That is the worst relationship to be in. If you haven't read my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work, there's a link below to get a copy of my book. Chapter one, speak your truth, do it with kindness. And chapter nine is if it's sincere and from the heart, 
You really can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Ladies, the duct tape you have over your mouth is the reason why you find yourself in circumstances that lead to heartbreak. If you are unwilling to dig a bit deeper, then you have your only yourself to blame. Look, I get it. This dating, by the way, dating is is scary. It is scary. We are meeting total strangers and we know nothing about them. This is why we have to spend more time doing due diligence beyond the physical and the romance. And so so many of you are so hyper focused on the the romantic aspects of a relationship and not enough in the practical aspects of a relationship. And so I shoot these videos and I habitually repeat myself over and over and over and over again. So it sinks in because here's the thing. When a man leads with, I'm not looking for anything serious. Can we have a casual? I don't want to put labels on it. That's a man who doesn't know what he wants. And by the way, you all say to me, Jonathan, I want the man to be the leader of the relationship. Well, if he doesn't know what he wants, how can he lead? And by the way, I don't believe in a leader in a relationship. I cannot stand the rhetoric out there, leader of the relationship. Let me tell you, I, and I'm going to be really firm right here. I believe in partnership, two sovereign beings co-creating a relationship and not a leader that's one up, one down. And I know the red pill community espouses this. I know a lot of religious people espouse this, you know, because it's biblical. I don't subscribe to that. I'm not your I'm not your coach. If that's what you subscribe to, I believe in partnership where two sovereign beings get together and they co-create something together by speaking up, by talking, by digging more into the emotional aspects of the relationship. The reality is is your partner should be the safe space place you can should land and you both equally should be um in that space. It's not just you need to be safe. He needs to be safe too. Because you know what? We no longer live in an environment where we financially are, women in particular are no longer financially dependent upon men for survival. So the real value in the relationship is emotional intimacy. If you haven't read the book, Emotional Intimacy, by Robert Masters. There's a link below to get a PDF of all the books I recommend. I highly recommend reading this. And if you're not familiar with your own emotions, I got to tell you something. You ladies, you might vomit your feelings, but you're really vomiting a lot of just, you know, trauma. Learn the language of emotions, what your feelings are actually telling you by Carla McLaren. I highly recommend reading this book as well. I'll put that up one more time. The language of emotions. What? And by the way, if you go back and rewind this, if you want to get this, um, and there's a link below to get all the books I recommend. Folks, one of the things I do as a coach, my whole area of expertise is teaching discernment. By the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. My whole area of expertise is teaching you discernment. Discernment means figuring out fairly quickly, is this person worth investing in? And actually, one of my clients told me today, she goes, you know what? I realized this, your coaching isn't discernment about picking guys. Yeah, she, she said, I had a broken picker and you've helped me pick fix my broken picker, but you really helped me figure out who I am as a person and what I really want. And that's what I brought to the table as well. Again, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call. See if working with a coach is right for you. Folks, when you hear things, let's take it slow. Uh, if you hear, I, I'm not looking for anything serious. If I only want casual, if they're unwilling to actually go deeper, if they are unwilling to answer deeper questions, if you ask the question, what's the resistance, and they're not willing to go there, then save yourself heartbreak and cut it off sooner rather than later. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Please post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours.
As always, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. And then in the link below in the first comments, check out schedule a discovery call with me. Check out the books I recommend. Follow me on Instagram and all that good stuff. Okay.